Welcome to Gene Canada's TV, episode 604, and uh, you got your host, Dank, uh, and got some, uh, one real quick announcement I wanted to talk about, a shout out, when we, uh, Chris and I uh, went up to the rally up in Salem last Tuesday, uh, we went, stopped by the 420 Lounge at PGN Lodge, great place, it's a cannabis resource activity center, and uh, when you first get there, the first thing they do is open arms, they give you a hug, and they say, welcome home. <laughs> so, I mean, you're off to a great start when you get, just get there. And uh, it's in that, uh, some kind of a, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure, some kind of a maternity, I mean, uh, anyway, fraternity lodge, I guess you'd say. Multi-leveled, uh, pretty good size, a lot of rooms, and uh, they have poker, and uh, anyway, this is up at Salem, up by Salem at Kaiser. So. A shout out to a great, great place to be. I wish I could have spent more time on it. I was up there, but uh, it's five dollars. This is a medical uh, cannabis resource center, and uh, it's five dollars a day, or uh, and then you get a card, or you get a card eight visits for thirty bucks. But anyway, so uh, again, uh, check them out. Good people and a great place. I, I wish I lived closer. Uh, <coughs> And also, I always remind you that uh, at the beginning of the show, I keep forgetting to, put, to mention this, but hey, put down, put down that bong and pick up a pencil and paper. Make sure you got a pencil and paper because there's some interesting stuff I'll be talking about, and uh, I want you to, we need everybody's attention on this. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the uh, rally we went to last uh, Tuesday that I just mentioned. This is a story by Bonnie King with SalemNews.com. That's Salem-News.com. February 21st, titled, Oregonians Fighting for Fair Cannabis Laws Strengthen Numbers. <clears throat> All are welcome to join the rally Tuesday, February 23rd at high noon before the hearing for SB 1598 begins. <clears throat> the most important part is showing up. This simple fact is true in every case where a showing of support is needed. This year, the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program is at risk and the collective voice of the people is what's needed most. The Marijuana Legalization Committee hearing for SB 1598 is being held Tuesday, February 23rd. Activists and concerned Oregonians will be meeting on the Capitol steps at noon for a rally before the afternoon's legislative activities. There will be a couple of canopies set up for shelter and there is expected, as there is expected to be some rain. The Marijuana Legalization Committee, not a public meeting as of yet, hearing for the SB 1598 will be held in hearing room 243. An activist from Southern Oregon, Sandy Diesel, will attend along with two busloads of Oregonians anxious to be heard. <clears throat> Our wonderful public servants do not give us any notification of when these public hearings will be. In the last month, we literally found out 24 to 48 hours prior. This past Tuesday, they did not announce the public hearing until we actually already uh, in charge for previously scheduled meetings, said Diesel. Our last opportunity is next Tuesday, the Lowe public hearing. We may not know until the day before. The hearing will be broadcast on a laptop with external speakers for people who may be testifying, should become a public hearing, but are not able to be in the main meeting chambers. In addition to the hearings, meetings will be with staff and legislature have been scheduled regarding some of the topics. And some of the things that they're working on is reduce the patient fees from fees to a minimum of $25, a maximum of $50 for all patients. Restore protections from warrantless searches for gardens not participating in commerce. <clears throat> Restore 24 mature plants to patient gardens within city limits and rural residential areas. <clears throat> Remove garter, grower fees for patients or initiate a one-time re address registration fee. Oregon OMP, OMP provider residency maintain patient refugee establishment but ensure that providers and businesses are Oregon-based or institute residency requirements for primary investor stockholders. Expansion of ACMM to include 51% plus patient provider participation. <clears throat> there will be a letter delivery process, procession <clears throat> with, with, uh, with district legislatures as well as members of the committee receiving letters from their constituents who are unable to attend. <clears throat> 
Now, <laughs> this next state, the next two paragraphs, are co this is a, supposedly a quote by me. It is neither assumed or expected that any of these topics are the opinion of or aim of those not present, nor is embracing all of them expected for participation or uh, collaboration, said Dan Kuzer, event organizer. <clears throat> the spirit is in protecting the Oregon Medical Program, offering opportunity to Oregonians in their home state, helping to establish a system that incorporates all the aspects of the cannabis community, as well as their host communities. So, that's a great, great state, couple of great statements, uh, but I didn't say them. <laughs> I don't know why, why my name got to him, but I think that was my friend Chris, and he does speak well, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and take credit for him, I guess. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting to see uh, a quote printed that you didn't say. <clears throat> and then I came across, uh, speaking of uh, Chris, he was asking me if I knew who Sheila Polk was, <clears throat> and I didn't know I hadn't heard of her, and so came across a couple of interesting stories about Sheila Polk I wanted to bring up tonight. <clears throat> it's uh, first article is from the uh, drugwarrant.com written by Peter Guth uh, Guther. It says, Sheila Polk, intentionally misleading moron, corrupt, or some combination. Sheila Polk, intentionally misleading moron, corrupt, or some combination. That's, that's the title, yeah. Uh, say, uh, this is what she wrote. Safe pot, tell that to 62 kids who died. That's the name of the article. She wrote this and uh, <clears throat> she's, uh, she is a county attorney and a vice chair of, for, of uh, Arizona, in Arizona for Responsible Drug Policy. <clears throat> she wrote that uh, marijuana is an, is an addictive and hazardous drug. But lately, some are taken to proclaiming that marijuana is safer than alcohol, a message that is not only wrong, but dangerous. According to the Arizona Department of Health Services, in a study that examines all deaths in Arizona of children under age 18, a disturbing number of child deaths resulted from substance abuse. It was linked to the deaths of 128 of Arizona's children in 2013. Guess which substance was the most prevalent? Not alcohol, not meth, although there were close seconds. But marijuana, in 2013, uh, marijuana use was associated with the tragic and needless deaths of 62 children in Arizona. It is unconscionable to experiment with legalization on, Americans, on Arizona's youth. Those 62 children whose lives were snuffed out in 2003 would certainly agree. And according to the author of the article, he's saying the only thing missing, of course, is what the study actually says. <clears throat> uh, although, this is a note inserted, although substance use is a known risk factor in child fatalities, it is important to remember that the term associated is used because it is not always clear if or how the substance use had a direct or contributing effect on the fatality incident. <clears throat> now the article goes on, the CFR, pro CFR program defines substance use as associated with a child's death. If the child, the child's parent, caretaker, and or if the person responsible for the death during or about the time of the incident leading to the death use or abuse substances including illegal drugs, prescription drugs, and or alcohol. Also, the study notes that more than one substance may have been associated. Just think how high the numbers would be if they, if they, uh, if they track how many child deaths were associated with milk, based on that definition. So, and then the other article <coughs> is uh, in the uh, Phoenix Wireless. Phoenix New, let's see, PhoenixNewTimes.com, written by Ray Sternfriday, dated February 19th. Arizona anti-marijuana crusader Sheila Polk, ref Polk refuses to say whether she smoked pot. The morning, uh, morning panel discussion, Breakfast with a Side of Marijuana, was hosted by the chamber for a group of about 75 of its members and other registered guests at the Doubletree Resort in Scottsdale with the goal of hearing more about the proposed marijuana legalization in initiative expected to be on Arizona's ballot this November. Polk and Seth 
uh, Friesen, our co-chair and chair of the anti-legalization group Arizonans, or Arizonans for Responsible Drug Policy. On the legalization side were J.P. Holyoke, chair of the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol in Arizona, and Ryan Hurley, a Scottsdale lawyer who works with cannabis industry clients. The Arizona Public Reporter, Levon Wing, uh, Winget Sanchez, served as moderator. During the discussion, which not surprisingly included the accusations by, of lying by both sides, an audience member asked the panelists whether they had ever used marijuana. Polk went first and refused to answer. Questions like that are inappropriate, she said. That's right. That's, that's right. The same veteran politician who expects voters to install her to a fifth year, to a four year term this November and who's fashioned herself as the top anti marijuana voice in Arizona wouldn't even try something like along the lines of, I didn't hail, like former President Bill Clinton. She didn't try the standard once or twice, like former Arizona Governor Janet uh, Napolito. Apparently, in her 16 years of office, Polk's Polk never heard that a refusal to come to comment sounds highly suspicious. Why doesn't she just say yes or no? Her colleague, uh, her colleague Gleason, a businessman and conservative talk show host, had no problem mentioning at the Wednesday breakfast that in college I traded a little bit. Holyoke, whose adult use legalization initiative is expected to be on the Arizona ballot in November, said he's never used marijuana illegally. A marijuana, a medical marijuana patient at Arizona Law and current <coughs> and president and principal of Arizona Natural Selection Dispensary in Phoenix, Holyoke said he's 39 now, and, as, and, and this is the first time he tried cannabis. Uh, was it 37? So <coughs> anyway, that's uh, oh, and then back to uh, have a quote on the back of the. Uh, should have wrote myself a note, but. Uh, this somebody posted uh, the first comment to this uh, first article on Sheila Polk, and he wrote, "Never get in the way. Never let the facts get in the way of uh, dis dis uh, dis an effective piece of hysterical rhetoric." And that's the prohibitionist motto. So uh, remember that one. That was uh, <laughs> pretty pretty well pretty well put. So. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so Sheila Polk, and that's kind of, even though she's in Arizona, that's far now, I hope, to, you know, I, I want her even closer than that, but that's the kind of people we have to fight against and the kind of lies that we have to overcome. So that's why I've been in Akron for close to 20 years, and I'd sure like to have you join me. You could use the help. Come on down to the show, uh, behind the shoulder in high school at the Community TV 29 Studios, uh, Monday night, 7.30, come on by and say hi and visit and uh, be on the show if you like. You like to tell your cannabis story. I like to have people come in and tell what the cannabis has, has uh, affected their lives. So, anyway, we're going to take a court break and uh, we're going to be right back with the second half of episode 604. And uh, you got Dank here, so I'll be right, we'll be back. Well, I smoke some marijuana with some people I like Just like everybody does from the east coast to the west I didn't even notice the cop on the bike Didn't know I was about to be the 20 millionth marijuana arrest Should have fought for marijuana law reform Should have gone to the web and typed in norm Norm to the L dot O-R-G Norm will drop the A dot org, baby National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws 604. I can't I keep looking at that number? And I'm just amazed. 604 episodes. We've been at this for a while. <laughs> Labor of love. Anyway, uh, continuing on, uh, interesting cannabis news. Uh, this is something I haven't read for a while. And I uh, this is from StopTheDrugWar.org/chronicle, and you can sign up to an email uh, list. And they'll send you an uh, uh, email once a week with the uh, uh, great stories on what's going on in uh, the whole cannabis uh, uh, reform community and, and what's going on in different states. This example, and this is uh, February 26th, under marijuana policy, they had an article that the uh, Supreme Court hears a case against Colorado legalization today. The nation's highest court is deciding whether to take up a challenge against the state's legal marijuana law from neighboring uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma. 
the, de de just, the death of Justice Antonin uh, Scala, Scala last weekend could alter the balance. If the court splits conservative versus liberal, that would mean a four to four vote on the case. In, in, in regular cases, that would mean that the lower court rulings would hold. But the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction when states sue each other, meaning that there are no lower court rulings raising the question of what would happen next. In Ohio, the legalization initiative campaign called it quits. The group Legalize Ohio 2016 says it has put its signature gathering drive on hold because it doesn't have any money. The group's political action committee, Ohioans for yeah, to end prohibition had only six two hundred and sixty eight dollars in the bank. The group has some eighty thousand signatures, but needs more than three hundred thousand vo valid voter signatures to qualify for the ballot. It says it will instead concentrate on supporting the marijuana policy uh, project's Mar uh, medical and marijuana initiative. <clears throat> and side note here for. Uh, <clears throat> Being an activist, collecting signatures, and a lot of initiatives over the years, and I understand that completely. It definitely takes a pile of money. Uh, got, if they have 80,000 signatures now, I'm wondering how many of those are they sure valid because uh, authenticity can really kill you if your signatures aren't really sound and, and correctly gathered. Uh, and then you would need 300,000 valid signatures. So anyway, uh, Ohio's trying, but they've been having quite a battle in that state. Uh, under asset for, uh, forfeiture, <clears throat> Illinois County sued for asset forfeiture racketeering. Three people have filed a federal lawsuit against the Kane, Sher Kane County Sheriff's Office alleging it is running a racketeering enterprise by stopping cars, falsely arresting and, re and searching them, and seizing their cash and cars for the benefit of the county. The suit also names three deputies, including one Sergeant Hain, who uh, who is also employed by a private company, Desert Snow, that trains police to prolong auto uh, traffic stops, conduct searches without warrant or consent, and aggressively seize assets. <coughs> the plaintiffs allege they were stopped, searched, and had several thousand dollars in cash seized, and that they were uh, booked into the county jail overnight but were never charged with a crime. <laughs> they were released the next day. Police found no drugs or other suspicious items. The plaintiffs are seeking comp uh, compens compensatory and punitive damages. <laughs> Boy, uh, law enforcement. New Jersey bill would criminalize drug use by pregnant women. A trio of Democratic Assembly members have introduced Assembly Bill 774, which <clears throat> would make using drug, using drug while pregnant a felony crime. Advocates for pregnant women called the bill blatantly discriminatory and said it will deter pregnant women from seeking prenatal care and drug treatment. They also said it was aimed at poor women. So <clears throat> I've heard of that one before and uh, hopefully that uh, will be shot down by uh, some court as being uh, uh, violation of people's rights, I would, I would, I would hope. And, and so I don't know, <laughs> time will tell. We'll see how it turns out. <coughs> The, uh, <clears throat> this is an interesting out of Washington. Uh, this is dated February 18th is, uh, on Bell, BellevueReporter.com, written by Allison DeAngelis. Eastside Narcotics task, task, task Force Disbanding Marijuana Legalization Lack of Funding Pose Problems. After 25 years of work, Combi combating drug-related crimes, the Eastside Narcotics Task Force will be disbanded in June. Over the last few decades, the Puget Sound area have, has experienced ongoing significant drug abuse crimes. Stretching the resources of the individual police departments, the task force reported in documentation from 2005. The member agencies did an evaluation of the task force and its mission, and what we decided was that the task force had run its course and that due to a variety of challenges, it was time to sunset the task force and look at other options, Bellevue Police Chief Steve Milet told the reporter. The task force has been operating since 1981, 
<coughs> and, member, and memorandums of understanding were officially signed in 1997. The King County Prosecutor's Office joined the group in 1990, and the King County Sheriff's Office followed suit in 2002, and the Washington State Patrol in 2010. Prior to the formation of the task force, the various law enforcement agencies had worked independently. Working together allowed the departments to pool personnel, improve the utilization of funds, improve training, develop specialized expertise, and more according to the task force. Collectively, they investigated drug running operations, money laundering cases, and more. They seized $276,000 worth of meth in 2011, and five pounds of heroin and cocaine, guns, and thousands of rounds of ammunition worth more than 400000 in 2014. But as marijuana was legalized in Washington and, and funding began to lessen, the task force faced face serious challenges to its future. When the state law changed, it made us pause and take a look at our mission, Milet said. When I arrived in Bellevue in April 2015, the police chiefs were already discussing how marijuana, marijuana laws were changing the whole drug trade landscape. <clears throat> marijuana had been a large focus of their investigations prior to its legalization. Notably, they broke up a nearly $5 million pot growing operation near Tiger Mountain in 2009 and another $1 million pot growing operation in Renton in 2010. That same year, a 4,000 plus square foot Bellevue home was found to be filled with more than 730 marijuana plants. Their funding has also been shrinking over the last few years. <clears throat> the dozen or so officers uh, on the task force were funded uh, through federal grants and taxpayers' dollars. While most grants once brought in $360,000, the task force only received $122,000 this last year. Initially, the task force made up for the gap in funding through the assets they seized from criminals. That largely dried up after marijuana became legal, Milet said. The task force determination does not indicate that drug usage or drug-related crimes on the east side are lessening, nor that the various law enforcement agencies will stop investigating them, Milet said. The east side is on the verge of a heroin epidemic, various officials have reported. The Bellevue Fire Department use of Narcan, a drug to combat opi opiate overdoses, has been increasing over the last few years. Heroin has also become cheap, and more easily acceptable. <clears throat> According to Jim Norman Johnson, Chief Executive Officer for Therapeutic Health Services. It's definitely a major issue, but we're going to be focusing our resources on a local law, he said. That being said, there's no doubt that the drug trade do doesn't stop at the borders of Bellevue, he added. The Bellevue Police Department, which has contributed the most officers to the task force, to establish a narcotics unit comprised of their task force officers within the existing investigations unit. <clears throat> Going forward, the various law enforcement agencies will continue to work together on an as-needed basis. The agencies in King County have, very long, have a very long, rich history of working well together. So whatever we need is coming, Mercer Island Police Chief Ed Holmes said. Mercer Island will continue to investigate drug crimes in their city, but will not have a de dedicated narcotics unit. It is, unknown, as un, it is unknown at this time what changes the Redmond and Kirkland Police Departments will be taking to replace the task force resources. And these departments responded to request for comment. The task force will formally end in early summer 2016. So, <clears throat> it's interesting, uh, legalization is supposed to shut down the black market. They haven't seemed to shut down the black market, but at least um, seem to be cutting back on law enforcement, <laughs> forcing to cut back on law enforcement. <clears throat> it's an interesting world we live in today. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have this from the Oregon, uh, from Hemp News, written by P uh, Derek Stanley, dated the 25th of February. Oregon, <coughs> Oregon, the Sen Oregon Senate passes a bill allowing tax-free medical marijuana in recreational shops. A joint committee of Oregon lawmakers spent Tuesday afternoon in a meeting pushing toward forward a bill that would allow medical retail cannabis stores to sell tax-free medical marijuana to card-carrying patients in the state. 
Bill SB 1511 reads as follows. The measure prohibits taxation of retail sales made to a medical registry identification card, or card holder or their designated primary giver, caregiver and clarifies that the local option sales tax does not apply to medical marijuana. It expands early start retail sales to include edibles, topicals, and extracts. A bit it sets daily limits on sales of edibles and pre-filled carbon dioxide vaporizer cartridges containing marijuana extract. Exempt producers from canopy limits under specified conditions and providers that limits on uh, mature marijuana plants does not apply until April 21st, 2016, or to a person who has applied for an AOLCC license. The Senate easily passed the bill with a vote of 80 to 10. The bill now goes before the House for their consideration. In addition to combining recreational and medical stores, the bill would also allow adults over 21 to purchase edibles and concentrates, currently unavailable to those without a medical marijuana card. So we'll keep posted as the legislature comes to an end and see how it all turns out. It's a uh, wild, wild gamble, wild chase. And also, hopefully by next show, I'll have the results and see what happened on our appeal to uh, use the park. The State Parks Department has denied the use of our, of our park next year because, according to them, I allegedly allowed marijuana use. So uh, we're uh, appealing that and uh, should have a, uh, a word on that, by the, like I said, by the time uh, we have the next show. So hopefully we can uh, announce good news. If not, we have another level appeal if we don't like the uh, outcome of this one. So whatever it is, we'll keep fighting. Uh, we have been since 2003 and, and nothing's slowed down the hemp fest yet. Every year we come back and have a great event. So hope you'll be part of it. See you next week. You got Dank here, and I uh, hope you'll be here. Talk to you later.